Hello, I'm going to demonstrate um, how you can draw ellipses um, in perspective when you are drawing a circle that you're viewing from an angle it won't appear to be a circle anymore it will become uh, an ellipse and um, what I want to show you is um, a really good way for drawing those ellipses you can't just draw any ellipse and let's say you know, um, because the ellipse changes as it gets closer to the horizon line. Um, so say you have a, a can of soup sitting in front of you. The ellipse <clears throat> that's further on the bottom part of the can is going to be wider um, and deeper than the one that's close to the horizon line. It'll get to be almost flat as it reaches the horizon line. So this method will help you um, plot those out. So first I'm going to start by drawing a rectangular, uh, a rectangle in perspective. So do it like so. So I'm going to show you how to draw ellipse within a rectangle. So here um, you find the middle, you want to find the perspective center. And that's different than just the center. Um, you could measure this side and find the middle, which is about here, but that's not the middle as you turn something. So if you take a, a square and you find the middle of it and then you tip it, the middle's going to shift off center. And that's the perspective center. And that's the real center as you're looking at something that's foreshortened. So this is the middle of this rectangle that's drawn in perspective. Then you want to find the crosshairs. And you do that, they basically are lines that travel through the other sides, through the sides of the rectangle in perspective. So it just helps you find that, <clears throat> that true center and, and, and kind of divide the rectangle into shapes based on that. So here we have that. Um, the next thing you want to do is divide the space a little further. Um, you're going to fit your curves of the ellipse into these quadrants. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to draw lines from the crowd where the crosshairs meet the walls we're going to draw lines here it creates kind of a diamond shape and that's basically going to give us uh, a sense of these these triangles in the corner that's going to give us a sense of where those curves will fall when we're freehanding it um the the uh the curves of the of the ellipse and the idea is that the ellipse um, touches, oops, I shrank this a little bit. The ellipse touches parts of the rectangle in perspective. We want it to touch here, um, in the middle, uh, between this corner and this drawn line. We want it to touch here, 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 and here. So I'm going to draw an ellipse into that space and show you um, how that works. See here, this ellipse fits into this space um, in perspective. So then if you want to draw a, a cylinder in perspective, you <clears throat> will draw a, a rectangular prism in perspective, which I will do just now. Remove some of the guidelines so that we can do the top of this um, cylinder in perspective um, using the same technique. So I've changed the color of the line so that we can see more clearly what we're doing here. So I'm going to find the perspective center. I'm going to draw guides the crosshairs. Um, again this is in one point perspective so you're maintaining your horizontals and your verticals. A side of the box is facing you, of the rectangular prism, and then all of the um, orthogonals of that top are all following the vanish one point vanishing point on the horizon line. This translates to two point perspective and three point perspective, but you'll follow the uh, vanishing points differently. And if there's demand for that, I could show you that, but not today. <laughs> So basically, I find the crosshairs, I find the perspective center, I draw in my diamond, and then I will fit the ellipse into this space as well. My ellipse into that space, and then basically all you need to do is connect 
the top and bottom <clears throat> of those ellipses. You can see that the top curve of this uh, cylinder is more flattened, it's more foreshortened than the bottom curve, it's much more exaggerated. If I take out the guidelines, you can see that cylinder in perspective. Now this would be what I would call a can orientation. Um, you can also do a wheel orientation, which would have the ellipse on the side of the rectangular prism. So if you were to build that here, kind of decide how, uh, how big you wanted that to be. Like so. So then your the forms that you would be filling in, the ellipses would you be putting into this side right here, you'd find your perspective center and do the ellipse. And this side, you'd find your perspective center and your crosshairs and do the ellipse. So using the same method, I found the crosshairs, I found, well first I started with perspective center X, crosshairs here, then I drew in the diamonds. And you can see um, the wheel distorts the ellipse a lot more. Uh, in this case it's kind of as it gets close to a vertical line that's associated with the vanishing point, it's going to get more and more narrow. Um, you can also see that kind of the curve here is sort of squished into that little corner triangle differently than it is fitting into this triangle and that's just because there's more room. So every triangle is going to create a different shape based on where that circle is in your in your perspective. So it's good to keep that in account and then if I wanted to make this um, a transparent cylinder, patch these two edges and then when you get rid of the guidelines you have a wheel cylinder and a can cylinder. Tube cylinders are the easiest because the circle's basically facing you and traveling back in space. So they're also the least likely to need this method at all because you can see when the tube is facing you in one point perspective you get a perfect circle in the front and in the back. So really this method applies most helpful um, in can and wheel um, oriented uh, cylinders. So I hope this was helpful.